Hello, Mark here. Now then, what should we draw today? Now, I think what we're going to do today is to do some more of the Badger cartoon drawings. And what we're going to do, we're going to have the Badger over here slightly looking up. Mr. Badger. Now, uh, uh, ears come around right about like that. I don't know if you can see that. And then this here, you just get this type of shape on the other side. And again, snap. Goes down. Now you've got to remember this has got to come down low enough because you've got to get your nice striping. Now I'm just doing this as a guide for, for a minute. I'll actually shade this in properly in a moment. I'm going to put the eye back there because they tend to go up like that slightly on one side where the eye is going to be. Now, I'm going to do this because this is one of those where we're going to sort of do a layout of roughly where we're going to put everybody before we do the picture. So there's uh, now we're going to do this, this is going to be Grandad Badger because we're going to give him this nice bow tie to wear. Now the thing is with these sorts of things like bow ties and waistcoats or whatever when you're drawing these kind of characters it's quite handy, it's a hat because you can use it as a guide and people can recognise it, the character because you're building up not only when you do these characters you've got you try not always successful but you try build up a personality well I do anyway I mean I've got 500 goblins living under my stairs well that's where they sleep they live in the house but and they've got little bunk beds under the stairs where they sleep and it looks quite amazing at night because they've all got little night lights, like I've said before. And now then, I think mean, actually we might change this one to George. So we're going to take this bow tie out, and this will be George Badger, the young Badger because I've started him a bit low in the paper and I'm going to give him a nice tie today not that I've ever seen a badger wearing a tie but there uh, we are nice tie and his jacket coming around like so because, like I said, I tended to start this picture a bit low on the paper. And we want to get everybody in. Now, when you're doing these, I mean, this is cartoon, the cartoon world, so you have to stick to some extent to basic anatomy, because this is nowhere near the anatomy of a badger, obviously. Now then, what we're going to do, see, that now we're going to put Grandad Badger up here, he's a lot bigger. Nice. 
so we get him placed in here but uh get this eye the granddad badger no granddad badger wears his spectacles on the end of his nose and what I tend to do with things like glasses in these sorts of characters I tend to leave the lenses blank so we don't actually shade in I'll show you what I mean in a minute I mean, that's the best way I'll put that here or there and then his other ear can go like that there I think that's something like it now, of course, you can take as long as you want over positioning these characters. The reason I'm doing it quite quickly is because we got on the clock as we got the length of the video that I'm making. So, there we are, that's, and we're going to sort of, now we can put Granddad's bow tie on. In there, somewhere like that. And have his coat coming around. Like so. Maybe you want to go out a bit at the back here, you might see it there. And we just get his rough shaping for now we can add all the other detail in a minute so there you've got Grandad Badger and George Badger roughly drawn in now we want to work out who they're talking to for obvious reasons now I don't know who could because should we have to, should we just put this let's put the mole diggy the mole up here and we won't see much of him in this particular picture because he's just gonna be sort of peeping out from here but that's half the fun i mean i to be honest with you i've never managed to get a book published but then to be honest with you I've never actually managed to get one finished because I always seem to get sidetracked by something else I know that's a terrible excuse but actually it's kind of true really not a very good excuse because I should just get on and do it really maybe with all the drawings I'm doing out of this lockdown perhaps we'll get something you never know now as I said before oh badger uh, badger mole here he's aware his flying jacket pilot's jacket but he I don't know why he does it but he does Rusticated cuff. I wasn't going to put that in, but I know it's quite cool. Uh, that comes around like so, and he's not got very long legs, and he can stand about there. I'll put the shoes in in a minute. So there we are. There we are. Because the thing is. I tend to feel more comfortable drawing all my characters facing this way. I spell it because I'm right-handed. Now the thing is, 
you can't really do that in a book if you're going to do a book full of illustrations you're going to have to do different poses and scenes and uh, so you're going to have to I'm afraid you know do that and it's good practice to get out of your comfort zone for this sort of thing because you never know what you're going to get asked to do anyway because I tend to get all sorts of kinds of artwork to do whether it's putting a picture on a ceramic plate for example or a mug or a goblet glass goblet a greeting card menus for pubs, hotels and that type of thing I've done over the years because you have to make a living and uh, sending off to publishers is now a lot harder than it was now you've got the internet because you really can't it's very difficult to get your work seen if anybody out there can help me in that way I'd be very much appreciative anyway there we are now what we're going to do here we're going to have these guys now talking to a wizard I think now the wizard is going to be the way their head is going to be right here which is right, right so we can still hopefully fit the old wizard's hat in now this story that I'd be doing with this character George Badger which is this fellow here now I'm going to move that camera just up slightly so I'm not sure you can actually see what I'm drawing here uh, no I think you can I think you might have to move the camera up, up slightly so we can get a bit more of the paper there we are that's a bit better isn't it I think so let me move wait a bit oh no I don't know well hopefully it is So let's do something with this hat and we're going to come right over, I think, like so. With the old wizard's hat in this picture. And we're going to start his nose about here. And we're going to go right up like right that. He's got a great big nose. And of course, wizards have quite a uh, spot. Mustaches, long beard. So, if you've ever seen me do, do the gongs, very similar. And if we actually bring an ear down to about there, you're not going to really see much of this because it's going to be covered in uh, facial hair, really. Which uh, I think that's do for the beard. And then. Uh, Quite a stout fellow. Uh, a little eye there. And he's going to have a pair of glasses perched up here. Just sitting on the end of his nose there. Like so. And we can bring this arm up there I think and now I think we're going to put his hand up here 
and then you have these fingers coming around, like so. And then we could put the old wizard staff because they always have a staff, don't they? Gotta have the uh, Piccadilly staff. So uh, we can put a nice brown pearl or semi precious stone in there. We'll think about that, what we're going to do with that later on. Right, and uh, so that's where the wizard's going to be. We put one of our enchanted trees behind here. I think we'll probably have a couple of our mushrooms here. Don't worry, it's all in pencil so we can rub any of this out. As we go along. As we go on our merry way, as they say. So we have a couple of those in the foreground area over here. Now, we got these characters here. Now, this is like I said, the wizard talking. Yeah, so we're going to have that. But I think we'll have a, a little sidekick of this wizard. She's going to come around. Hat's going to come to about there. Because he's a lot shorter. About the same size as them all. Now, I haven't made up my mind yet. Whether this is going to be male or female, I don't know. Flower. It is her hat, or well, no, because you can't see her nose because of Merlin's hands there. So what we're going to do? We're going to turn this into a witch, I think. Lots of hair that we can put in here, and she can have a nice rotund little belly like that. Got a hand coming out here. This one, she could be carrying a, a broom. I think so. Like so. So we're going to put that bristles up this end. Because she's not sweeping the floor. She's... Like that, there we go. That goes. Got the little legs coming down here. And here. The old witch's shoes on. The nice buckle on the front. Like so. Just about do that, I think. And then we could just put a line through here. So we could just about guess where the ground should be. Now, then I think what we could do is we can. That's going to go right to the edge of there. This tree. 
So we can get around that. We can sort that out in a minute. It's uh, not going to put the whole of that tree in there, I don't think. That we could do the same. Because these trees, talking trees. The talking trees of gore blimey wood. That's what we're talking about here. Nice fellows. But uh, I think we probably want to make this beard a bit more adventurous. I don't know. We could see, because we could soon rub it out again, I think. So we want to get right around right here, I think. And then right around right here with it. come right down here with the old beard hint of a mouth in there you wouldn't see a lot of a line there and there now then that's somewhere it near it I think so I think that'll do for part one, which is just showing us how we're gonna do this. Now I find that's the easiest way to connect these shoes and just do a little line coming out like that. And maybe we're not there, there. Now, somebody showed me this a few years ago. If you want to do, like, a little pool of water, which we're going to put in here. This is just a bit of fun to show you how you do this. If you draw something like that, say, so, okay. Now that doesn't look like anything much, does it? But if you bring a few lines in at varying lengths, like so, gives the impression of some sort of reflection there. So, you can add almost like a little pool of water, if you wanted to. Something like that, that gives you like a cartoony pool of water. That's how we used to draw water in, well, how I draw them in cartoons, so anyway. We don't want that in this particular drawing, so we'll take that out. But uh, there's a bit uh, information for you. Right then, there we go. I think that's it roughly laid out. So that's going to be part one of this picture. And I'll get on a bit and put a bit more detail in. And we'll come back and do part two. Okay. It's Mark saying goodbye for now. If you like what I do, please subscribe. Still very short of subscribers. I don't know what a subscriber is, but it'd be nice to have a few. Anyway, you take care now.